now the patient has been identified as requiring swabs to be taken. If symptomatic, they should be wearing a mask and have access to alcohol-based hand rub. You need to explain to the patient that if they're going to cough or sneeze, to turn away and cover their nose with tissues and dispose of them correctly. It's also important to explain to them that touch is one of the major ways of transmitting a virus to other people. If they cough or sneeze into their hands, their hands are now infectious. If they touch a surface, the surface can then transmit a virus to someone else touching it. Finally, you need to explain to the patient what you're going to do. You're going to ask the patient to take off their mask, stand with their back against the wall, or if unable to stand, sit in a chair with their head supported either by the chair or against a wall. If the patient is from an aged care facility and is unable to sit or stand upright, ask them if they can sit up in bed with pillows propped behind them. You are going to stand to one side of them and you will place your non-dominant hand on their forehead and insert a swab into their nose, only two or three centimetres. Also, explain to the patient that this might be slightly uncomfortable and may cause their eyes to water. You'll then ask the patient to open their mouth so you may take a throat swab. This isn't too uncomfortable but may cause a gagging reflex. Once the swabs are taken, you'll then give the patient some tissues and ask them to wash their hands and put on a new mask. They'll then be directed to a waiting area following completion of the procedure. Ideally, swabs should be collected in a single room. However, in some instances, it may be required to use a screened-off area for collection of swabs as a designated collection area. The next step is to collect as much information as possible on the patient. This is documented on the specimen request form. On the request form, you will need to document the patient's name, date of birth, requested test, date of collection, description of symptoms, date of onset symptoms, travel or contact history, vaccination status if known, and any contact with a public health unit. Also, you'll need to label two viral transport tubes with the patient's name, date of birth, date of collection, and site of specimen. Next, you'll need to put on personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, as defined in the guidelines for the particular respiratory virus. This is an important step in the process. If you are unfamiliar with using PPE, consult an infection control expert and practice prior to collecting any specimens.